Hello, hello, it's Helen here from HelenMartinOnline.com and I have a very special guest with me today. Say hello to Chef Katrina. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited for today's Facebook Live and to bring you my very special guest. Uh, Chef Katrina, you're probably wondering, Chef Katrina, but that's an interesting name. But we'll, we'll explain that to you in a moment. But I really wanted to bring Chef Katrina on live with me today because Chef Katrina is somebody that I consider to be a great leader in relation to helping people um, learn how to build their business online, but not only a great leader in this space, a really inspirational mentor to up and coming entrepreneurs about not only the marketing skills with building your business online, but the personal skills that you need to, you know, and the shifts and the challenges that come with that and moving through that. And how I know that is because she's been one of my personal mentors for um, the last probably nine or ten months and has had a huge part to do with my online journey and my growth not only in marketing skills in you know building a business online but also in my you know personal journey you know as well so we will talk to chef in a moment I just if anybody is on live with me please say hello tell us where you're coming in from say hello to chef um, if you're catching the replay later, please say, um, you know, replay so I can go back afterwards and say hello to you. But please interact with us on this live, you know, but I'm going to be asking chefs some questions and she can bring us her awesome wisdom and insight into building a business online. So very firstly, thank you for giving up your time, chef, um, and you know, um, being with us here today and allowing me to ask you some questions and sharing you know, your journey with building a business online and what took you from being a chef to the whole online world, um, you know, if you like. Um, so was that a sad face? No, this is me. I'm actually sharing this right now. So I'm a little distracted because I'm like, I'm sharing this on my personal face. <laughs> so I'm sorry, an angry face. <laughs> no, no, that was my, like, my contemplative face. I was like, am I doing this right face? I don't know what it was. Yeah. I what I was spelling and what I was writing. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you again for um, being live with me today and giving up your time to, um, you know, answer some of my questions and share your insight. I guess it's it would be intriguing to some people watching this live or on the replay why you're called Chef Katrina and we're talking about online marketing. And you can see that um, you've got even a chef's outfit on, which is part of this. This is what I want to share with you guys about branding done really well. This is personal branding at its best. So we'll explain that as we go along with this live as well. But Chef, can you just share with us why you're called Chef Katrina? How did you come to be branded that way? Yeah, so that's actually a fun story. Um, what had happened was I'm, I'm actually a chef. Um, I started way back when I always knew I wanted to get into some culinary arts. Like I always loved cooking for my family. It was one of the things I've done. Now I'm a child of six. So a family of eight. So we had definitely wasn't a small meal that I was cooking growing up. Um, and every time we did something, there was always a family event. There was always like more people at the table. So I thought, wow, this was really cool. It was like, how do you cook more food, more people? So in my journey, I actually got to work for Walt Disney World. So I spent, the, I spent about 12 years at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And I had the privilege of working for some of the, the best restaurants on property and had a lot of fun with it. Um, and so I've been called chef for so long that when I finally left the industry and I, I consider it retiring. So I don't say that I quit the industry. I actually consider I retired from the industry because it was really my choice to leave. Um, and part of what had me leave just to kind of tie in the chef part is, um, I've actually owned a restaurant for about nine months inside of my career at Disney. So there was a point with Disney where I, I actually was looking to quit Disney and they made a request. They said, hey, would you be open to being a part-time chef? We could really use somebody in a couple of roles um, here on property. So I negotiated some really good terms and um, I decided to stay on as a part-time chef for about a little over two years, almost three years. And that meant that I worked about three to four days a week. It's not bad when you look at like what everybody else was doing. I had a pretty easy peasy job behind it. 
So um, during that part-time moment of my career, I decided I might as well buy, own a restaurant. So I got a partner of mine and we bought into this wing restaurant. Now, I didn't know anything about chicken wings back then. <laughs> now I do. Um, I learned a lot about like the kitchen. I knew what my strengths are and it played out really well. But what I discovered was that I sucked at marketing. I didn't know how to really run a Facebook ad. Like I discovered that was one of my downfalls. I would have all these solicitors walk in selling me better ways to market my business. And I'm like, what don't I know? Right? So, um, learning that process and kind of getting like a, a, a real impact of what it must be like as a small business owner to have this type of bombardment around all these different ways to promote and market your business. I was like, it was definitely was overwhelming for me as I'm trying to run a business. Mm. So what caused that? So then when my partner and I sat down and said, okay, you know what? We're done running a business. Um, we decided that we were going to close the doors. I decided I wanted to learn online marketing and I was watching a lot of people. So I've been kind of watching the industry for about six years at this time. A lot of the marketers, a lot of the top leaders, and they always are like, well, what do you do to stand out? And I'm like, hmm. You know what's really I've never seen is somebody wear a chef coat <laughs> at a live event, right? I have yet to see anybody at a live event that didn't look like everybody else. So I started to kind of contemplate, like, well, what would it look like to be chef at a live event? Like, all I got to do is put on a jacket, right, and show up. So that kind of started the, the beginning process. I know the story is a little long, but it is the process of kind of how I kept the chef brand. And then when I got online, it was solidified because everybody that I used to work with would answer back, hey, chef, what's up, chef? How's it going, chef? So whether I was a normal clothes or not, I was still yeah, being right. called chef online. Yeah. So I was like, let's wrap my arms around this and just become chef online. And that's kind of how this came up. But I will tell you guys, it's not without its ups and downs because I'm such um, an opposite of what you think of chef. You think automatically, like, what's your favorite thing to cook? And I'm like, no, ask me what's my favorite thing to market. <laughs> yeah, so people have still got that chef, chef frame of mind yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So I butt up against that a little bit, but hopefully that answers your question and kind of shares my journey around how the chef piece came into play. Yeah, it does. And I think it's a really good example of, you know, I talk a lot about branding and branding online and really positioning yourself, you know, what makes you different. Um, and you're a prime example of that with your, your chef badge, if you like, Chef Katrina, is that it makes you stand out. So it's a really good example of branding done well. And I think, you know, people need to appreciate that and you know if it makes somebody think about how they can stand out for themselves in their branding then you know that would be awesome no so how did you sort of get your start with online marketing how did you sort of really leverage the internet to start building a business that was viable enough for you to let the chef world go um oh. That's a great question because it, it doesn't have a, a fluid answer. Like everyone thinks like I quit the job being a chef and I must be making money. Wasn't actually the case. It's actually a little backwards from that. Um, I had been introduced, Helen, about 10 years ago to this industry. And I purchased like many because I was a network marketer. I was also a chef and I knew... What I discovered around network marketing was just like the power of it, right? Like I, I got the vision of what it meant to be a network marketer. The difference it could make in my life, the difference it could make in other people's lives. Wrap yourself around a product and just like go gung-ho, right? So I got that. Um, but I definitely struggled because being in the kitchen, I couldn't, I couldn't recruit people I worked with because I was their manager. Yeah. So there is, there's a, like all of a sudden there's like nobody to like, I've got this great product and I, I can't use my hourly employees and have them build a business with me because it's, it's just against the rules of the company I worked with. For sure, yeah. So I came online um, with that in my world, right? So I was like, how do I leverage the internet? How do I leverage it? And Facebook was just getting started. I don't know if you guys realize that, but 10 years ago, Facebook was like, 
baby, baby, baby. You know what it is today. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I had, I didn't have a lot of money. I was kind of starting to figure this out a little by little. Um, I had been told that blogging was the way to go. So I started blogging. And I, I think I built and destroyed five different blogs before where I have what I have now. It's brilliant. I, I, I did all sorts of crazy stuff around blogging. I built stuff around my company. I built a recipe. I mean, it, it, it was not pretty. Um, so I kind of dripped over time. And I guess really what was a turning point for me in this process was one day I walked into the kitchen and I had been reading things by like Robert Kiyosaki. I've been kind of watching the industry. I've been picking up training. I don't know how many of you guys have picked up training, like just bought training to buy it and then never did anything with it. <laughs> Lots of it, right? Yeah. Um, actually, Tim Irway, one of my mentors actually said to me or said something in a training way back when he's like, I have tons of resources, books, and trainings that I've purchased that I've never done anything with. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, yeah, that sounds about right. Like, that's what I have. So when I left the world of being a chef, Helen, I had no financial backup. I didn't have a way to make any income. There was nothing financially to keep me going after about six weeks like that's when the money ran out and it was like figure it out so my mantra became you're going to either succeed at this or you're going to succeed at this <laughs> good way to look at it <laughs> like because the idea of going back to the kitchen because everyone kept telling me it's like well you're really good at what you do as a chef you could go back to it and that was the one thing that scared me that actually scared me more than what was in front of me was going back. Yeah, I, I can totally relate to that with the corporate world. I guess you were in the corporate kitchen. I was just in corporate, you know, business-wise. But something that keeps me driven to keep going and succeed is as much as I'm very grateful for my corporate career and everything that I learned and the people that I met and my connections that I still have today and I'm still on, you know, a board of directors to do with my old life, if you like, um, I don't ever want to go back there. And that's not that I ha have any disrespect for it. It's just there's so much more to life than working day in, day out, day in, day out for predictable hours, predictable wage. Um, you know, there's so much more out there than that. So I, I hear you. I, I really do. With It's scary to go back. I don't want to go back to the yeah. corporate world like you didn't want to go back to the corporate kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Because what I saw around me, Helen, honestly, was I saw an 80-year-old gentleman who couldn't leave the kitchen because he needed to take care of the health. He needed the health benefits to take care of his wife. And yet he was barely functioning in the kitchen. I came across family and, and other chefs. They're like, well, my kids are in daycare and I barely get to see them. Or I saw them doing like the parental handoff for the holidays because being a chef, you're working a shift during the holidays. So it was like, oh, I'll come in for breakfast and then I'll meet you at lunch. But then you can go to, you know, work at dinner time and we'll just meet. And I was like, wow, I'm like, ooh, is that what I want? Right? Like that to me scared me more than anything. Not having holidays, I barely saw my family. And at the time, I still, right now, I'm the only family in Florida. Okay. Right? Like my parents don't live here. My siblings don't live here. Like it really became... Where I started to feel like I was building a family at Disney and I looked around and I was like, is this the family I want? Yeah. So it really, for me, guys, it was, it was, it was a choice. And it was a choice that I could make at the time because I didn't have any family. I didn't have a significant other when I did what I did, right? The only person I was responsible was me and my dog. And so the choice that I made to, to like basically leap into the abyss without knowing if there was ever going to be a safety net ever. Like I fell for, you're talking probably 18 months I fell, right? And by that, I mean, I leapt into the abyss and I, I was falling because I didn't have a safety net. Like there, there was just, it was a constant, it felt like a constant falling forward motion. Yeah. But I didn't have like a stability behind me. Yeah. Right. And I was playing games of financial, um, there was like a pay loan type of a thing where you could borrow money, but you had to pay it back within like a short period of time. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I was playing like a vicious money game. Um, it wasn't pretty at all, 
but I knew and my, my belief was it will happen. If I stick with this long enough, it will, it, it has to happen. Like there is no other like reality for me. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that's a very important part of the journey is, you know, what you're basically saying there is belief. Um, you had a belief that there was no other way, it's just going to happen no matter how long it takes. And I think when you have that belief um, in yourself, um, you know, with all the challenges that come and the hurdles that come along the way, if you truly have that belief that it's going to happen, then you just, you know, you keep on going. And I think this is a common challenge for a lot of people with building their business online and even in network marketing in general is they don't always have the belief. And if you don't always have the belief, you're not going to have that, you know, unwavering consistency and determination to really make it happen, which obviously, you know, you did. Yeah, when you say that, it actually made me look, it's like I got resourceful because I had no other options. Like I didn't have money, so what else could I do? Yeah, yeah. So I know you know, take, listening to what you're saying about sort of how you started in that journey and not having sort of any backup behind you and just doing what needed to get done. I know my journey with, I struggled with um, sort of traditional offline network marketing and running out of my warm market and the awkwardness that comes with that, etc. And that's why I started oh. researching building my business online. But what's helped me in my journey is finding a mentor, you know, like yourself to pull me into line when I need to, to, you know, keep me going when I'm, you know, I, I don't know if you, if you even know this, but a few months back, I put a photograph up after one of our mentor sessions and I'd been crying and I think my caption was, I've just been beat up by my mentor. <laughs> That's her, ladies and gentlemen. That's this one here. But, you know, what helps me keep driven and going and knowing right from, not, well, not that there is right and wrong in marketing, but just learning the sort of marketing skills is by you helping me on that journey. So what, and the community that we are involved with that, you know, we're connected to. So what helped you back in those original times of trying to make this work and having that, you know, um, just grit and determination. What was it that helped you with your online journey and learning what you needed to learn? I would say the biggest impact on me, Helen, was the community. Uh, it was it was literally the only thing that kept me going. And what I mean by that, so you guys are fully aware, was that the community I dove, dove into was Elite Marketing Pro. So when I left. Uh, when I retired from Disney and I jumped into the abyss, I, I actually didn't jump like blindfolded. I looked around me for, for the resources that I had available, like what product services had I bought into over time, right? Who did I believe could be my mentor, though I couldn't afford to buy them, but I would have some sort of access to them. So I started to kind of look through all the people that I'd seen online and I came back to Tim Irwin, right? And so at that time, he was launching the product of Elite Marketing Pro. So it was actually kind of a fun place to be in at that time. Yeah. And really what saved me was because it was all about marketing. Like the whole premise was, I'm going to teach you marketing. And as having just owned a business and coming out and seeing my, what it was missing, right? Seeing my failures and what I could do. Uh, the only safe place I had was the community. Because I felt like these are the people that I could relate to. Like, I can't go back to the kitchen, but who can in this community can I learn from? And how can I be more valuable to the community? So my mentors literally became um, the people that I now see uh, building their businesses. Like, we've been on this journey together. So it's... It's so interesting how what drove me, Helen, which was crazy at the time, but maybe because I had time, um, every time I saw a question in the community that went unanswered, it literally like kicked off a trigger in the back of my brain. It's like, go find the answer and answer it, right? So I would go Google. Like Google became my best friend, guys. YouTube and Google was like, oh, like it has all the answers. Um, <laughs> it really does. Like I yeah. promise you, sometimes it's. <laughs> When you don't find what you're looking for, I Google it, right? Um, but it was that with community, that going in and feeling like I was at a, in home, 
feeling like these people supported me, having conversations with them, um, that, that honestly was like the saving grace. That was that was me getting mentorship from people that were just like me. Yeah, and I, I have to agree with that because my my journey, and I think that you know when you're in network marketing, it can be a very lonely journey. So, and I think anybody in this industry knows how important it is to have proximity to those around you that are on the same journey as you are and that can support the goals that you are striving for. So we all know that in network marketing, but when I started researching building my business online, it really is the same thing in the online world. So, um, you know, I surround myself with people as much as I possibly can um, with people that are building their business online with me and having mentors such as yourself who've already, you know, you're 10, 20, 30 steps ahead of me learning from people that have already made the mistakes that you're probably about to make yourself. And so they can guide you through that process. But being surrounded by people in a like-minded community that can teach you, guide you and mentor you to where you need to go um, has been my survival, I would say. Not just, you know, oh, it's been great. It's been my survival mechanism to be, um, you know, connected with this community and to have the mentorship, you know, from people like yourself. I don't think, I really don't think I would be able to build my business online successfully without being connected to a community like we are. I just, that's reality for me. Um, so it's super, super powerful. I was going to say, yeah. hi, Courtney. How are you going? Yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, many and you know what? I will tell you this, and because listening to you talk, it kind of reminded me too. It it was my safe haven, right? It's like I needed to plug into the community to remind me what I'm doing. And it's getting those questions answered too. Like yeah. when you're when you're in network marketing or trying to build your business online, whether you label yourself this or not, you're an entrepreneur of sorts. And people often don't see themselves as that. But if you really get the concept of network marketing and the residual income and what it can bring you in your life, and you shift that world into online marketing and you know really leverage the internet to do it in a big way, it can be a lonely journey you know, um, yourself. So oh, yeah. if you don't surround yourself with people that are like-minded, that have already achieved what you want to achieve and you stay connected with those people on an ongoing basis, it's going to be really hard to be successful, I think. That's just my personal view. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it was, it was, and at the time I joined the community, and this is something that I, I kind of am embracing now, is that I, that community when it started, Tim Irway and Matt Kritz, and some of the top leaders that were creating this instead of Elite Marketing Pro were available, but limited wise. Like they weren't really in there all the time. They were doing everything else to build. And so it kind of looked at me it's like, well, what would it look like to be that type of person that would just be answering questions? All right? And I didn't always have to know the answer, but then what, what started to happen is that the leaders saw me answering questions. And if I reached out to them, they were more open to answering questions, knowing that I was actually either looking for answers to questions and that I wasn't coming to them with a problem. I was actually coming to them with looking for the solution. That's such a huge thing in this journey is becoming resourceful, looking for answers. I think some people in network marketing and, and definitely when building your business online, you're looking for that exact answer of what works and marketing just doesn't work that way. Marketing is not right and wrong. Marketing is trial and error and that's a huge part of building your business online is trial and error. Um, but being consistent, putting yourself out there, being connected with the right community, asking the right questions and you know I know for myself in being overseas you know last week is there are people in the community that have more belief in me than I have in myself. But, you know, what that does for me as a person and my entrepreneurial journey is it just um, pushes me to even do more and greater things that I'm doing now. So the community to me is just, um, as I said before, it's a survival mechanism. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I wouldn't even say that reflected for me. Like, I was you just 
two years ago, right? Because it was it was Tim it was Tim Irway's belief, Matt Crystal's belief, like, and they saw something in me that continued to pull me up, right? Like I wanted to be that person they saw my they saw me as that I had didn't yet see myself as. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I like literally if I were to shift you guys, it was like put me back two years and I I'm literally Helen at this moment because um you talk about being resourceful and one of the things I started looking at was how do people like borrow influence? How do people actually build their brand? And what I started seeing was that it was people interviewing other people. Okay. Right, because you're there there's an influence being brought. I don't know if this is gonna make a hundred percent sense to you guys. But what I started to see is that it didn't matter what I had or didn't know, but if I could interview somebody to provide value for my audience, then I must be doing something awesome and well because I'm getting influential people to say yes to wanting to be interviewed. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, it's an exposure agent for those people to be introduced to your audience. So it actually works like you guys are actually working with each other to to edify each other and to acknowledge your leadership so and i did this with like i don't know if so I, i'm guessing the most majority of your audience is network marketers Alan. yes majority would be okay so maybe you guys have heard of like ray higdon or people like um eric worry or dan hoffman or uh, Norbert Orowitz, or maybe Tim Irway, or maybe you guys have heard of Bernie Ceballos. Maybe you guys have heard of some of these leaders that are out there. Send some loves, um, some loves if you have, if that resonates right? with anyone. If anyone. you haven't, you'll hear about them sooner rather than later. Um, <clears throat> but what I started to do is just interview them. And so every time I would just reach out and say, hey, would you be open to like a 15 minute interview? And they say yes. I'm like, okay, great. Fair right? Nice. Yeah. It's connections rapport building exposure um you know but that was obviously your initiative and um yeah. you know part of my scared to death scared to death do it though yeah. scared to death. but as i say to people all the time success is on the other side of fear if you don't get uncomfortable um, if you don't do things that scare you slightly <laughs> it, you, you're probably not going to reach the heights or the success that you know you're you're capable of if you don't yeah. sort of um you know get uncomfortable um, I've completely forgotten what I was going to ask you. <laughs> so <hard cut. laughs> We're all human. No. So if, if, well, that's it. It always comes back to me. One of the things that I like to share with, um, you know, the, the people that follow me is that like you were saying before, and I was saying, um, with being overseas last week is that there are people that have more belief in you than you even have in yourself. If you just have the courage to step forward, and this is where people that are listening, if you think it's really difficult to build a business online or network marketing is difficult, you know, nothing's going to be easy. And anything that's worth, that's really, really easy is probably not going to give you really, really great re rewards. So something that brings you awesome rewards is probably going to be difficult to some aspect. But if you reach out to the right people, get the right support, get the right training and education and have people in your corner like I've had for me with Chef Katrina, then, you know, if you're determined and you can, you've got a vision for what you want to achieve, there's no reason why you can't get there if you've got all those things in place. Um, you know, so just, you know, strong message from, you know, coming through there is, the value of the people that you've got in your corner that can help you get to where you need to go. Yeah. So I don't know how long we're on here for, but I do want to respect the time frame for everybody. Yeah. So, um, so tying into what you said, like one of the things that helped me was definitely education, right? So investing in myself and recognizing that I was investing in my education because there's a lot of things I didn't know. And then I think, well, I can't remember who said it to me, but I, I promise you one of the, the best things I ever heard was that to learn a new skill, you have to kind of put everything else on hold, right? So there's gonna be a pause button that's gonna happen in your life. Um, and what I learned, what I got from that was that, okay, so to learn this skill called online marketing, to understand attraction marketing formula, there, it isn't an immediate 
payoff, right? It's like, it's not instant gratification. It's not like I get online today, I'm gonna be a millionaire tomorrow. Like that was really firmly planted in my brain. So I had, and so I've always talked about the investment. If I'm willing to invest a year now to learn the skills of actually what it is to build a network marketing business, right? Like I actually take the time back, put my business on pause, and, or just have it maintain where it's at, right, without any growth, and my upline's gonna say, hey, there's nothing going on, get back in here. But I say, hold on, I wanna learn this skill, and it's gonna take me, because I've never learned marketing online. I've not actually learned what the, the concept of marketing, because I'm a consumer by default of social media. I consume it, you and I consume it. We scroll, you see it, right? We scroll through things, we consume it. But on the flip side of consume, there's a whole other world of like Facebook and social media that actually is called the marketing. And that's the unknown world that most of us, when we get online, don't even know exists. And so if you don't know it exists or what it's all about, you're going to have a learning curve. So I, I was okay with the learning curve. I decided that however long it took me to master the skill, once I mastered it, I could go back to my network marketing company. I would have... A, following behind me, I could literally hit the button and I would have people joining me because I had developed trust with my audience, I had learned how to give value, I had learned how to train my audience, and I had developed myself into the leader I wanted to be. And I didn't even know those skills when I joined network marketing because everyone says, well, just teach and train your team. Well, I was so afraid to teach and train my team, I didn't even actually want to build my business. Mm. That's crazy but true. Yeah. So it was learning these skills over the last, you know, 18 months that once I started getting them and I had people asking me for coaching and training and speaking engagements and things that started to happen, I was like, whoa. Like now I have what we would call influence or, influence or attraction that should I say, hey, I'm going to do this. Now my tribe would follow me. And it wasn't hard anymore to get people to join me in my business. Does that make sense? Like that, that kind of was my thought process. It was like, okay, and so it's a year worth investing for the rest of my life to be able to live financially free in the lifestyle I want. Even if it took me three years, which it did, now I don't have to worry. Was it worth it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the key words there, which is a strong message I always talk about, is attraction marketing, is learn how to attract people to you online rather than the traditional sense of chasing, you know, family and friends and chasing people to buy your products or join you in your business opportunity. So this whole piece of attraction marketing is obviously where you started. Mm -hmm. it's, it's where I started and, you know, growing all the time. So, you know, for any of those of you listening live or on the replay, if you are not really aware of attraction marketing, I'll put a link down to a free resource down below in the comments section when we're finished. So you can just start to expose yourself to this world of attraction marketing and, um, you know, where it can lead you is, um, you know, endless. Once you've got a following online, um, you know, and you know what you're doing, it does take time and there's skills to learn. There's no question about that, but it all starts with this little piece called attraction marketing. So I'll drop that link in the comments section below when we're finished. Um, but, um, you know, in, in appreciation of everyone's time, I just, um, really want to thank you for your time chef um to sort of talk to me today give us your insights um you know about the online world and what it's done for you and um what helped you to get where you are um just really appreciate you sharing you know your wisdom and insights in this particular area so thank you very much yeah. if anything you guys i would say trust helen <laughs> like i know no really and i you guys are like laughing but I'm, I'm serious like trust helen um, she has been phenomenal. Like, I've even learned so much from her and just in her persistence and her caring. Like she's just, you guys have felt it. She's this warm, generous, uh, overly caring, abundant, happy, crazy woman sometimes, whatever, right? But she's so much fun to be around and she brings such an energy. And I'm hoping you guys can feel that energy that comes through online because that's just really, if you meet her in person, that's just exactly who she is. And there's something so pure and authentic about that when she comes and she teaches you guys. And I've been in your guys' community. For those that are actually in the community, I kind of sneak in and, and watch what she does. So I know what a, a treasure she is and what, what valuable training you guys are getting from her. 
And if you're in this business of, of network marketing and you're looking for a way to generate leads and build a business, then wrap arms, link arms with Helen and you know trust what she recommends and the training she puts out because I promise you the journey she's on, she's looking back to help as many people achieve what she's achieved so far. And it's been an absolutely incredible progress. So that's my, my word to you is like, she's here, you know, grab attraction marketing formula, grab the training, start putting it into practice, trust her training, trust her to guide you. And I promise you, if you stay persistent and consistent, you're going to get everything you want just by following this incredible leader. Well, thank you. I didn't expect that um, at the end of the call, but I appreciate your kind words. Um, you know, you're a huge part of my journey and, and where I am today. So back at you, Chef. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much. Again, appreciate it. Um, you know, it's always been, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. So very grateful for your time and uh, words of wisdom today. So yeah. thanks. See you, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Does that work?